We did not coordinate this. Hello? We did not. <laughs> well, we didn't consciously coordinate it. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm so good. How oh. about you? Man, beautiful day. Got a lot done. Um, but no, just a good day. Really good day. Sort of like Friday. It's a good day. You know, the end of the movie. It does feel like a Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though it's a faux Friday because it's Thursday that we're recording this. And we're talking about La Comida, food. Food week. Oh, man. Who doesn't have ideas about food? But realize that it's not just the food we take in and the drink we take in physically, but it's also the metaphor, food as uh, what it symbolizes for our spirit. Nourishment. Nourishment, yes. You know, food, you can walk into a kitchen a lot of times and see a sign that says food is love. Yes. And this is the week that really talks about, you know, not just food and how we love our families, how we treat our families, our recipes, our cherished things, but also, um, you know, how we are nourished by people, how we are loved, what, what feeds us. Yes, and, and, and I mean, we, we can use the, the metaphor of or the intersection of soul food, you know. I mean, just that ability to, you know, eat comfort food, because uh, I've been perfecting a green recipe for the last 15 years at least that I still am working on because it's, it's like ORM, our raw material. It's an organic thought process. And you just do it over and over and over. Yes. And, and it keeps giving you new stuff all the time. Yes. And so what, are, what does our consciousness feed on uh, that, you know, the false ideas of our consciousness proliferated by ego, supported and produced by ego, individual and collective. I don't know if we say a lot about the social mores and behavioral do's and don'ts of the collective that we take in as ego. I mean, that's why values and ideals are so important. Well, there's a lot to that statement that you just made. Yeah. Because we all have an idea of what that is, and it's not everybody else's. No, it isn't. And not everybody's common sense is the same. Hence, the week after that, we'll be talking about ignorance. So, um, but just think about the ignorance of what we don't know about food, even. Something we do, we have to do in order to sustain ourselves. But then there are people, I can remember this one conversation with my dad, uh, and he did not cook for himself. He always had a wife or a partner. And they never made him help out or do anything? He made, well, Cheryl was such a good cook, is such a good cook that oof, I wouldn't, it's an honor just to be a sous chef in her kitchen. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So he had enough sense, but he every morning though he made her a cup of coffee. How she liked it. Oh, well, that's it, a thing. That was that that's was an exchange. Yeah. That that was they agreed upon that. And food can be such an exchange. Yes. Um, it can it can be something that feeds and and that gives and that continues to give. You know pass down recipes, pass down seeds of tomatoes that came from someone's garden. I've got 100-year-old mint from Mexico in my house, See. Um, staying alive for somebody right now who was afraid they would kill it over, <laughs> over the winter, and they wanted it to grow. So, um, and it's still growing. It's, it's so happy. It's ready to yes. go in the ground, in my yard and in hers. Oh, so you got to love that. And then even the recipes that somebody made, if it didn't come out of their pot, made on their stove, with their kitchen, and the spices that were in there, yes, you know, okay. you can do the exact same thing that they did and it doesn't taste the same because there's, there's a part of the self that goes with cooking. The other side of that that I think is really important to address right now with all the food insecurity is when you didn't, when you had a period in your life where you weren't nourished, and that's emotionally or physically. Or spiritually. Spiritually. Mentally um, too. And you're hungry. And that space of hungry can create so much fear and so much shame. So there's a, a disconnect between our sustaining our abundance sometimes that we may feed ourselves 
well materially, but we're not getting the soul food, the metaphorical soul food, the the the, the ability to see the look of a friend or partner or mate that you feel nourished by their look. Yeah. You feel that's, nourished that's by their touch. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, Approval. Yes. And acceptance. acceptance. And uh, and one of my favorites, coexistence. You nourishment. Know. Yeah. Like heart nourishment. Heart, yeah. The, 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 the heart food. And um, I don't do that a lot, but there you go. Um, and even the I Ching woman, uh, Hannah Moog and Carol Anthony, the I Ching book, that's, they talk about nourishing from the, not only the ideas and the beliefs that come into our head that don't feed our consciousness, but what they do is that they program our consciousness away from the soul. Um, and I just know that since we've been doing this work, I'm just more aware of, I'll take that chi in as nourishing, or I'll say, no, thank you. Or I'll let it sit. If I can't make... Let it simmer. Let it sit there for a while until mm -hmm. you do know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things need to sit and soften up or toughen up or something in order to move them into move an ingredient into a different thing. And, 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 and if you just are aware that one of the ways that you know the ego is operative using fear is that the ego doesn't like ambiguity. You know, it wants an answer a lot of times. It wants, you make a decision. And so, um, but the soul, oh man, to trust that side and to be nourished by that side of our being, even for moments, initially can be really frightening because it can be giving you these these downloads of direct knowing or these mind flashes, as Carol Anthony talks about, um, that can be so counterintuitive to what your ego has been telling you or what people expect from you. You know, and and also what you expect from yourself. That's true. That's true. You know, really, Food Week is about what we take in. And is it mental? It's mental. Okay. It's mental. You know, how, how do we take it in? How do we, you know, how do the same children sit at a, you know, six kids in the same family sit at a table, you know, one of them decides they want to be a chef and one of them has an eating disorder and one you know everyone has a different experience at the table with the table with the members of the table everybody walks away with a completely different experience even though they're sitting at the same table food reminds us that we're sitting at the same table and we like are not going to have the same experience as another person I love mushrooms somebody else at the table hates mushrooms this is going to be a much better experience for me than it is for the hater of mushrooms. Yes. Yeah, and that, you brought that up because I can remember cooking for Darius, my bonus son, via Brian, and this was years ago, and, he's, and he, Brian said, you're eating mushrooms. You're going to eat your mother's mushrooms. And he said, well, Tracy cuts them up smaller. Because I hid them, you know, and made them a part of the broth and, you know, the sliced where you... They can be a little slimy if you don't like them. I have some like mushrooms, but that's just me. Also, as our palate grows, we <laughs> yeah, he was, will tell our parents teeth. that we don't want something or we'll stick with the same likes and dislikes, but in front of somebody else, we'll branch out. And especially if they cooked for us and it feels special, we're willing to try something that we wouldn't otherwise touch with a 10-foot pole. Well, if it's nothing else to put on a better face on something and not to be rude, you know. Or insulting, because some cultures find it insulting if you don't eat what has been made for you. There's another space where wholeness and ignorance play a big part. You know, we may lovingly prepare food for someone with ingredients that they're allergic to, or they don't like, or something like that. Um, those are moments that we're not going to be upset because we're rejected. We, 
we almost will feel shame or bothered that we didn't get it right. So it's, it's space where we can recognize without emotion that we screw up communications all the time. You know, we have things in our way all the time that we easily clear out, but when they trip us emotionally, we don't clear them. We hold them and we're ready to fight for them. So food is a week where wholeness is really, really important to hold with it. You're gonna go eat at someone else's house and everything's gonna be different than it is at your house. And what they do before meals, around meals, after meals, everything's gonna be different and you're gonna feel ignorant and you're gonna feel shame or you know what whatever you feel it's going to be something that's just different mm -hmm. it might come out as fear it might come out as excitement it, you might be anxious you know excited to try other people's food but everybody is going to experience things around food where they're trying things they've never tried where they've you know where they're branching out or you know willing unwilling allergies all those kinds of things we we it's an arena to play and be creative without a lot of emotional stuff in the way. Unless you are trying to prove something. Until we take it in our body, yeah. until we start judging yes. our own self. So wholeness around food is incredibly powerful. Because what it also has to do with food is medicine and food is love, food is creativity. I mean, where it... it and even metaphorically, that, uh, you know, just think it, just imagine, a, you know, a beautiful 75 degree day and you're in the park and you have a picnic and you have the uh, decollage is the neck thing, but it's a French word. Decolletage. Yeah, for the neck. And yeah, showing that. But then there's a French word for just raw vegetables and a or something. Anyway, I just... Crudite? Thank you. Thank you. My word, it just, you know... But I just saw the word yesterday. And so that's what made me... Because I said, oh, that's what that is. The broccolis and the radishes and the red peppers. Little, they're yeah. like appetizers. Yeah. The French. La Francais. They've really done really well. <laughs> yes, they have. Food is an art form there. Mm -hmm. And it's very well respected. There's a lot of ego attached to French cooking. There's also a lot of extra stuff in French cooking, richness and things that aren't necessarily good for the body. So water, breath, and alignment become really important this week. They're important every week, yes. and I say this every week, but breathing around our choices, breathing around what we do to nourish our body, and breathing in our body helps us stay present with actually nourishing it and treating it on occasion too because we gotta do that totally we all have to eat <laughs> yes and we're all gonna choose a different group of food that's ours you know again mm -hmm. th those choices are unique to each of us everybody's got their own palate yeah it is one of the ways that we show our unique qualities about how we eat what we eat uh, yeah how we eat and what we eat it's a cool and expression when? if and you when? let it be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, your favorite dishes, your favorite conversations that you have felt nourished by. Is there time to have a conversation when you express your appreciation uh, to nourish someone else, uh, to water someone else? Uh, just to be able to uh, luxuriate with someone. And rarely do I eat if I'm angry or frustrated. It's like it's a good. That's a good thing to go by. Mm -mm. No, I just you don't want to be taken in. No, you anything just, you just, while you're, you just while you're dealing it, with that. You act like a duck and let it wash off your back until you can eat. I mean, that's why when people are upset, they're like, I can't even eat. Mm -hmm. Or grieving, you know, and uh, not eating as well. So or the opposite extreme where you just uh, yeah. Do do a physical act like that instead of feeling. That's a that's possible too, but it's so personal and it's. Um, but I still feel it's one of the best ways to show love is not through the act of not just cooking, but um, what you exchange over the meal. Even 
a thank you or a nice tip. Mm -hmm. And just the joy at having been served. Yeah. I like that. We good? I think we are. So go eat some good food and have a spiritually meaningful or nourishing conversation. Good plan. See you next. Bye.